All right. Now, uh, let me show you an example of why would why would anybody bother with considering an integral as a function where the variable is one of the say upper limit. Let me give you an example when uh, you have to analyze behavior of something from engineering. And I would think about a tank where oil is stored and the shape of the tank is going to be, well the whole picture is going to be flat. Instead of three-dimensional tank I would think about two-dimensional tank just for simplicity. And so the shape of the tank is that it has straight side on the right, but very non-straight side on the left. And that's that's my tank, and it's supposed to have some oil. Okay. And then what is that you might be interested in? Well, you might be interested in knowing how much oil you have in the tank. Now, what is it that you can actually measure? Well, you can measure the level of the top, right? You can easily construct a measuring, measurement device, right? And you can measure this uh, height. So, let me introduce coordinate system. Let's call it x. And then this x is something I can measure. But what if I am interested in the volume? Well, I'm thinking about volume, but for this picture, it's actually the area, right? Since my tank is flat, so instead of volume, I'll talk about the area. Now, the area is supposed to depend on x, right? If I specify what x is, the area is completely defined, so my measurement of x should result in some number. So area can be thought of as a function of x. So basically, you would like to make a device, a little device, that converts this measurement automatically into a different number that tells you what the volume is, or the area. So, but that requires a formula. How do you figure out a formula? Well, you have to find the area bounded by this strange shape. Now, the idea is that if you put a second coordinate system right here, call it Y, and if you lie down like this, right, then what you will see is the normal x-axis to the right, the normal y-axis going vertically, and this left side of the tank has a shape that can be described as a function. How would you find the function? Well, in this case, it requires measurement of the tank that can be done outside of the tank. Because, uh, again, all these things about engineering are about efficiency and what you can do versus what you cannot do. Of course, you can, if you can take oil out of the tank, like pour it, and then put the oil back, and every time you put one gallon, you measure the height, you can put a table, right? One gallon corresponds to this height, one, two gallons this height. But what if you cannot? What if you are not allowed to pour the oil out of the tank to do these measurements? Right, then you have these constraints. You, you cannot... Well, you, you have to measure the function somehow, so you have to do some external measurements. And you can externally measure that function without taking the oil off, out. So, um, and then in this context, we are coming to the area being the area under the graph of that function. And you should integrate from zero to x. And that's exactly the function you have to implement in that little device. The function that 
the device that takes x and number on the input and sends this number on the output. Now the one tricky point that in this formula is you really have to understand what everything here means. I have three axes there. Are those axes all the same? No, they're not all the same, right? This x is quite different from those two. So those two are practically irrelevant for the outcome, right? I can replace those with some variable t or with some theta, whatever I want, I can replace them, well, those two, but I cannot replace this x. Right? So my variable in this expression shows up only once at the top, and that's how we come back to this concept of function from the integral. <coughs> 